Well, then let's begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of thy faithful, grant us by the same Holy Spirit to be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, so it's Tuesday today, um, February 2nd. It is the feast of the presentation of our Lord at the temple otherwise known as a Feast of Candlemas. Okay, and today we're going to comment on the um, gospel that comes from St. Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 to 40, which describes to us this incident where our Lady and St. Joseph bring Jesus to the temple in obedience to the Jewish uh, law of presenting the firstborn son to the Lord. So when the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Just as it was written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord. And to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves, or two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate of the law of the Lord. First thing I want to note here is, you see how obedient the first, uh, I mean, how obedient the Holy Family was to the law. Okay, uh, Despite the fact that our Lord was the lawgiver himself. Our Lord didn't really need to subscribe to the Jewish customs because he was above all of these. But you would see here the good example of our Lord and the Holy Family as to how individuals family, and families should respect, should know how to respect legitimate authority and customs of their time. Okay, so very good example. Now, as they were going through the temple, getting ready to present our Lord according to custom, there was a man there who has been living his whole life in the temple, waiting for this moment to precisely see with his own eyes hold in his arms the promise that has been awaited by the entire uh, Israel um, for all these generations. There was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Messiah of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation. Very beautiful how Simeon is described. He's described to be the righteous and devout man, awaiting the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. I want you to imagine the scene in that temple. You've seen it in some of the movies, right? That we have watched. Uh, Jerusalem around the temple was very busy. Plenty of people coming and going, right? 
so many people even trading. Right? That's why uh, when our Lord was was uh, already doing his public ministry, he even drove out these people who have turned the temple into what he called the den of thieves. Right? Uh, so you can imagine the, 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 the scene there. Plenty of people coming and going, coming and going. But in the middle of all this chaos, Simeon spots the Holy Family, spies them, and spots Jesus, and recognizes that this was the promised Messiah. How in the world would Simeon have spotted our Lord in all of that chaos? And every day he was there trying to wait for the promised Messiah, right? You know the, you know the, 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 uh, the, the clue that gave away the, uh, the, uh, the reason why Simeon was able to spot our Lord. It's that description because Simeon was a righteous and devout man and the Holy Spirit was with him. Righteous and devout. He was a just man, a pious man who prayed, who did the will of God and who was in the good graces of the Holy Spirit. That is the key. That is the key that allowed Simeon to spot Jesus in a sea of people coming and going in the temple every day. What's the lesson for us here? You see, we should also see Jesus in our neighbors, in your brothers and sisters, in your siblings, in your friends, in everybody around you. All of them are Jesus to you. Remember what our Lord said when he was already doing his public ministry. Whatever you do to the least of my brethren, you did it for me. But you see, we are not going to be able to spot Jesus and see the image of Jesus in our siblings, in our neighbors, in our friends. If we are not prayerful, if we are not devout like Simeon, if we are not in the state of grace, see, the state of grace, devotion, Piety are all the key factors involved in having the eyes of faith to see in our neighbor another Jesus that we need to minister to, that we whose whose needs we, we need to attend to, whose troubles we need to be concerned about, whose joys we need to share with. See? The way that we're going to see Jesus in others, if we ourselves would be, is if we ourselves were in a state of grace and if we had that devotion to Jesus himself and the piety required to see Jesus in others. Okay, so that's the first key point. And look at what Simeon said. Well, you know, now... Now, Lord, that I have seen you and held you in my arms, you know, now I'm ready to go to the Father, right? Because my eyes have seen the salvation of Israel. <clears throat> now, that salvation of Israel, what does Simeon say about Jesus? What is his prophecy about Jesus? He said... Behold, this child is destined for the fall and the rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And to Our Lady, he says, And you yourself a sword will pierce so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Simeon, from the very beginning, right there, 
has already labeled Jesus to be a sign of contradiction. What does that mean? To be a sign of contradiction. Well, our Lord himself said it. That, you know, in one household, father would be again, would, would go against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother. In other words, there could be some infighting even in, in one's own family. On account of what? On account of some people believing the truth and others not. And Jesus, here Simeon is saying, Jesus, who is the truth, the way, the life, and the truth, will be a sign of contradiction for some people who would not want, who refuse to recognize truth, who, have, who, who rather are friends with the father of lies, the devil. Because they don't want to recognize truth. They don't, they don't want to accept truth. They get convicted by Jesus Christ, who, uh oh, <laughs> Ava wants to be in the picture. They get convicted by Jesus Christ, who stands for the truth. Now, I want you to remember also that our Lord Himself said, no disciple is above his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. So our Lord, who is a sign of contradiction, who we follow as disciples of Jesus Christ, if he himself was persecuted, then we have to expect the same treatment from a government a community from our friends or family who do not subscribe to the truth. And you know what? This is what we're experiencing today. Right? This is what we are experiencing today. The persecution of an entire government, of entire communities, of plenty of people who do not understand and appreciate the truths that we live by and we live for and we promote. And that is why we are following the footsteps of our Lord. That is why we are also being persecuted the same way that our Lord himself was persecuted. But this is not a reason to be depressed this is not a reason for us to feel sorry for ourselves. Eh? No, because it is in this kind of persecution that saints are made. It is because of this kind of persecution and contradiction that we will attain grace for our own salvation, for our own perseverance in the truth, and for our own sanctification. So while we might be suffering, while we might be going through the difficulties on account of our being faithful to Jesus Christ, we should also be thankful that we are being given an opportunity to share in the cross of Jesus, to share in the persecution of Jesus. Because that is what binds us to him. That is what allows us to be one, to be united with Jesus Christ. So that like Simeon, who uh, after having held Jesus in his arms and seen him with his own eyes, was ready to go to the Father and told God, well now you can make your servant go in peace. Because my eyes have seen the salvation of Israel. We too can merit the same honor, the same reward of being with our Father God in heaven. Because we have offered the persecutions that we suffer on earth 
to God and united ourselves to the cross of Jesus Christ. So this is the, that would be the price of our fidelity. See, heaven is the price, is the reward of our fidelity, of our, uh, of our willingness to follow our Lord in the path of the cross, the path of persecution, maybe even the path of death. Okay. And that would have been a glorious, glorious entrance into heaven. If, if we remain faithful to our Lord. Okay. So beautiful, beautiful feast today, uh, of, of the presentation of our Lord. Okay. And, uh, as we prepare for mass, let us, let us pray that we too have that same devotion, the same righteousness, and the same desire to remain in the state of grace as Simeon did, so that we would merit seeing our Lord, holding Him in our own arms when the time comes that we get united with Him in heaven. Okay? Very good. Hello, Ava. Say good morning to everybody. Say good morning. Good morning. Oh, very good. Good morning. We'll go to Mass now. Okay? Bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye, <laughs> everybody. Okay.